and now it's time for coaches' comments presented by Southside Auto Tech. Cristiano Simonetta with you, joined alongside by Stars head coach and GM Chris Michael. And Mike's, you dropped this one six to three against the Fargo Force, but the main story was the first period. You allowed three goals within seven minutes. We all want to talk about mental toughness a lot with this team. How would you grade them in that first set of twenty? You know, I, I think it's unfair for me to to give them a grade. Um, and be emotional and, and you know what we're not here for that at the end of the day we we, we just continue to beat ourselves and, and that's that's the frustrating part and for everybody you know not just the staff but for the players and for for everybody involved right now this is it's frustrating when you know we play these guys now six times i believe um, in our fourth time up in this building, it's, it's the, the inexperience and being young, it, it's out the window now. You know, we're, we're 20 plus games into this, we're fighting for our lives. We need to have more desperation. And, you know, you go back, it, the first goal is offsides. And, but again, it's, it's not on the refs. Like, that's a bang bang play. And, you know, they're, they're trying. And, um, you know, our D doesn't played in tandem like we've talked about for four and a half months and you know our stick detail wasn't good enough and then the second goal is their mo they go low to high they get pucks to the net they get bodies to the net they want to be tougher and stronger in the hard areas and you know their their guy was and um the third goal we miss another block on the pk and it ends up in the back of the net so you know yeah we, we pulled aiden but it's not on aiden like we again it's just the mental lapses that are you know, you, you can't spot the best team in our conference three goals um, and expect a good result at the end of the night. So um, we're frustrated to a man, all of us. Um, you know, but we don't have time to feel sorry for ourselves. We really have to bear down now. And, and if we're going to, if we're not going to climb out of this hole, it's not going to be because of us. And that's just the way it's going to be. You guys got on the board in the second period. Jack Horbach with his fourth goal season, third goal against Fargo this year. Why is the line of him, Jack O'Leary, and Nick Nardiccia been solid in the last couple of games? Because they work. Like, they work. They're not the biggest guys on the ice, but they, I would argue they got the biggest heart, and, and, and I'll put them up against anybody in that category. And, and They don't stop coming at you. They go through bodies. They get pucks in. They move their feet. They do the little things right, and when you consistently do the little things right, you're noticed and you're rewarded, you know? So Jack's been a pleasant surprise. I mean, I think we got him in the third round of the dispersal draft. There's a lot of people that passed him over and, you know, he came in and we've talked about him before and, you know, he's, he's a lead by example guy and he's just gonna continue to work. And so is Jack O'Leary and so is Nick Nardiccia. And, and that's why they've had success. They, they are, like I said, they're not the biggest guys, but they they battle and they compete. Like they're Lincoln Stars, you know, and, and we need 21 guys like that every single night. Those three guys combining for a plus two rating. Now let's turn the conversation to Zach Erdahl. I mean, we talk about him, the hat trick against Omaha last Saturday. He has two goals tonight. It's not like he's overwhelming the defenses with one-on-one -on -one moves and shots in the high slot. They're goals from right around the net mouth. So what can you show to your team, especially heading into a game against Sioux City that's tough defensively right in between the circles because the goals come two to three feet. We've talked about it before, Mike's, but... It seems like there's not enough net front presence from your group and that drive to the front of the net to battle 50-50. We talk about it every single day. Every drill we do results in a guy going to the net front. Every offensive zone strategy or whatever you want to call it revolves around a guy standing at the net front. Similar to what Fargo did on their second goal, you deliver a puck, the D are just, when we go low to high, the D all they have to do is deliver it to the net front. You're not going to score a ton of goals from the blue line, but you're going to rack up assists when, when you have forwards that want to go to the net front. And you look at Zach Erdahl, and as a, as a veteran, as a leader, he's doing those things. And we don't have enough guys doing the things the right way consistently for us to string two, three, four wins in a row right now. But we're not, we're not out of this thing. You know, and, and we spot the best team in our conference three goals in the first period. And then we go out to outshoot them 25-20 in the second and third. And we outchance them. 
and we take the game to him at stretches. We make it 3-1, Jack makes it 3-1, and the next three shifts, instead of building momentum, we not only kill our own momentum, we give the best team in the Western Conference the momentum by turning pucks over. I mean, it, it's, it's not rocket science. You have to keep the game simple. You have to be steady. And right now, we just don't have enough of those guys. But, um, but we're going we're gonna to find our way. And, and again, like we're going to take some positives out of this game. We're going to harp on the things that cost us. And, and we need to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. If, like I said, if we're going to go down, make another team beat us. And we're not doing that consistently enough right now. But you know what? The moral victories are done. The inconsistency is done. And it's starting Saturday night in front of our faithful where we're going we're gonna to start to climb out of this thing. And we're going to do it our way for 60 minutes, and we'll see what happens then, you know. But, um, but credit to Zach. I mean, he's been, he's been outstanding. He, he's doing everything we need him to do, and, and we just need more guys to follow suit. One last question for you, Mike. You mentioned the home game against Sioux City on Saturday. You guys are 6-5 and five at home. Why do you think there's such a parallel of differences when it comes to playing, whether it's an intimidating building like Fargo, but just on the road in general where you're over 500 in your own building? Listen, w with the fans and the capacity right now, there isn't a building that's intimidating like, like it usually is in our league. Um, you know, obviously the last change matters, and when you can't set the matchups, um, when you're on the road compared to when you're at home, but you know, um, it's a little bit of a smaller building. We're we're built for for that, but like I said, like we we outshoot a team, we outchance a team, and in their building, we just shoot ourselves in the foot. We we don't capitalize on our momentum at home. We do. It tends to see that, you know, um, maybe it's because the crowd and in you know in our building and the fans are, are enthusiastic and. Yeah, it's loud and energetic and, and all those things, but you know what? We, we have to start winning some games on the road or um, it doesn't really matter what we do at home. So yeah, we're excited to get back home. And, you know, it's going to be a long, quiet bus ride. We're going to do a lot of soul searching. And all of us, that's myself included, my staff, and, and our players, you know, and, and we're sticking together through thick and thin.